Hi. In today's video, we're going to go through um, how to balance symbol equations, which is one of the really, really important skills to be able to do um, when it comes to GCC chemistry. It does account for between six and ten marks in every exam paper, so it's really important you get very confident um, with doing this, um, and it will mean you can pick up very good marks. Um, now, it isn't uh, particularly easy the first time you, you try and do it, so today I'm going to, going to go through one method, and nice and slowly with you, which will hopefully make it nice and easy for you to get good marks. And that method is called the bubble method. Okay. The reason it's called this is because we're going to represent all the atoms involved in the reaction using bubbles, and that will hopefully allow us to balance it nice and easily. Okay. So the first example we're going to look at today is the combustion of hydrogen in air to form water. Okay. So hydrogen gas we show as H2. Okay. We're going to be reacting that with oxygen, O2, and we're going to be forming water, H2O. Now, if you get to this stage on an exam and you've written out that, um, that equation like that, you're going to get two marks out of three, okay? which is quite good going, really, just remembering that hydrogen H2, oxygen O2 forms water. Okay? However, there is a problem with this equation as it's written at the moment, and that is that it's not balanced. Okay? So if you look at it, you've got two hydrogen atoms on the left-hand side, which are joined together in a molecule. We've got two oxygen atoms on the left-hand side, which are joined together in a molecule. However, we do not have the same number on the right-hand side. That breaks the law of conservation of mass that says the mass before and after the reaction must be the same. Therefore, we need to balance it out um, to make it a correct reaction. Okay, and using this uh, bubble method, sorry, we're going to talk through how to do that. Okay, now the first thing to do is to draw yourself a dashed line down the middle. And that's your kind of reference point. You need to have exactly the same to the left of this line as we do to the right of it. Okay, so we need to have the same, is that the same number of each type of atom on the left and right hand side? Okay. Now on how to actually do it. Hydrogen H2 means we've got two hydrogen atoms joined together. Okay, so we are going to show that nice and simply by drawing two atoms joined together, which are both hydrogen. Okay, so the little two here means they're joined together. So similarly for oxygen, O2, we're going to draw two oxygen atoms joined together, like so. On the right hand side, we've got two hydrogen atoms, H2, and one oxygen atom all joined together. Okay, so you can Represent this however you want. Okay, it's not an accurate representation of what water looks like. It's just showing us what atoms there are. Okay, so we've got two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom. Okay, so what you must spot is that on the right hand side we have only got one oxygen atom here. However, on the left hand side we have got two oxygen atoms. Okay, therefore we somehow need to get another oxygen on the right hand side here. Okay, we can't just add another oxygen to this um, formula here because that will change its H two O two which is actually a toxic chemical called hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so we're not allowed to do that. Instead, what you must do is double up the entire um, formula. Okay, so you need to have a whole other lot of water of H2O on the right-hand side here. Okay, so now then we've got one, two oxygen atoms on the right-hand side, and we've got two oxygen atoms on the left-hand side. Okay, so the oxygens are fine. However, by um, adding on another lot of water, I've also changed the number of hydrogen atoms. So now you've got one, two, three, four hydrogen atoms here. You've only got two, one, two on the left hand side. Okay, therefore you need to double up your hydrogen as well, like so. Okay, so if we look at this now, we've got one, two, three, four hydrogen atoms on the left hand side. We've got one, two, three, four hydrogen atoms on the right hand side. We've got one, two oxygen atoms on the left hand side, one, two on the right hand side. So this equation is now balanced. Okay, to finish this off, we simply need to count up the uh, number of molecules we have uh, of each chemical. So in this case, we've got one, two lots of H2. We've got one lot of oxygen here, so we don't need to put anything there. That just means a one if it was left blank. And we've got two lots of H2O. Okay, so a nice straightforward example to get us going. Okay, the second, second example I'm going to look at is um, quite a lot more difficult, but if we use the same method, um, it's still relatively straightforward. Okay, this is going to be the reaction of iron oxide, which is Fe2. O3. Okay, and we are going to reduce it or extract it from its ore using carbon, which is just C. When we do this process, we're going to form pure iron, because that's what we want to get out, and we're also going to form carbon dioxide. Okay, so if I follow the same, um, same um, idea again, I'm going to start off by drawing my dashed line. Okay, so left hand side, right hand side, and then I'm going to draw my um, chemicals out using bubbles. So Fe2O3, the small numbers means all of these are joined together. Again, it doesn't matter in what order you draw them out as long as they're all there. So that's one 
Fe, one iron atom. The second one, and three oxygens, one, two, three. Okay, so that's my Fe2O3. Carbon, it's gonna draw C on its own. Similarly for Fe, which is iron, just in um, that on its own. CO2, one carbon, join two, two oxygens. There we go. Okay, let's have a look. The first thing that springs out to me is that we've got one, two iron atoms here. We've only got one on the right hand side here. Therefore, I'm going to double up that and get a second Fe there. Okay. The next thing that's, that springs out to me is that we've got one, two, three oxygens on the left hand side. We've only got two on the right hand side. Okay. This is a bit of a problem because it's not immediately obvious how we're going to get the same number of oxygens here as we have here. Okay. In fact, what you need to do is look for the one um, you have less of. So in this case, we've got less oxygens here and double up this whole, um, this whole unit here. So we're going to have another lot of CO2, like so. Okay, so now we've got one, two, three, four oxygens here. We've got one, two, three on the left-hand side. Okay, so this time we're going to double up this one. Okay, and again, we can't just add an oxygen on its own. We have to add a whole other lot of Fe2O3 iron oxide. Okay, so now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six oxygens here. We've got one, two, three, four oxygens on the right-hand side. So we need one more lot of CO2 carbon dioxide. Okay, my oxygens are now balanced. Okay, however, I've changed the number of um, ions I have here and I've changed the number of carbons. Okay, so it doesn't matter which one you start with. Let's start with iron just because it's um, the furthest left. So I've got one, two, three, four iron atoms. I've got one, two, I need two more here. Three, four. Okay, and here I've got one, two, three carbon atoms. I've only got one here, so I simply need another two carbon atoms there. Okay, let's double check our answer. I've got one, two, three, four iron atoms on the left hand side, one, two, three, four on the right hand side. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six oxygens on the left hand side, one, two, three, four, five, six on the right hand side. I've got one, two, three carbon atoms on the left, one, two, three carbon atoms on the right. Therefore, this equation is balanced. Okay. But last thing, I just need to add in my numbers. So let's just count these up. I've got one, two lots of Fe2O3, big two in front. I've got one, two, three lots of carbon, big three in front. One, two, three, four lots of iron, big four in front. And lastly, one, two, three lots of carbon dioxide. Okay, slightly tricky example. Get yourself on Google, look up some of these and give them a go. Hopefully that bubble method will make it much easier for you to balance these successfully.